Welcome back to the Surrey Hills. Schools might be out for summer, the exam season may be over, but this issue we're going to put in a little bit of revision. So we're going to have a look at where we want to look on the trail, what we look at, how it affects how we ride and effectively just giving you that edge that uh, a lot of people don't realise they might not have at this stage and how we can make ourselves just looking that little bit further down the trail make a whole lot of difference to how we ride. Sounds really obvious and probably the easiest thing to learn but the hardest thing to master when you're actually out riding your bike. We refer to it in virtually every article because it is one of our underpinning elements that makes a massive, massive difference to the way we ride. Not just physically but also psychologically. We'll look at both those sides of things, how looking in the right place can promote good, good, uh, good skills but how looking in the wrong place can perhaps detract from your peak performance. So let's look at the very basic elements of uh, looking on a very fundamental level. As we pan through and look at the rider's eye view of the trail, by looking down too close to the front wheel at what's just ahead of the bike, we're using our focal vision to look into the peripheral vision field. As the rider picks their head up and starts to look further ahead, the peripheral vision is going to start working much harder for us. The focal vision is looking way on down the trail and we can start to read the trail much further ahead. This gives us a lot of time to take in information, apply the correct techniques or think through the correct techniques before we apply them so that when we apply them we're applying them more in the unconscious while our brain is already digesting further on down the trail. Here you can see not just through a few corners but also get an idea of where the corridor of the trail is leading beyond where you can see the surface of the trail through to the sections further down the trail that are yet to be uh, visible in terms of the trail surface but we're giving ourselves early information about what's coming up. So not to state the obvious, it's best to look further ahead than the front wheel. The further ahead the better, but where exactly should we be looking and what should we be looking for? The secret to it is to look for the nearest high point to you in elevation as far down the trail as you can see it. So what you're looking for is looking through the trail, scanning ahead and trying to find a point as far down the trail as you can see. If that point's level with you, that's going to work really well. And what that does is just stop you from dropping your head in and looking down into the trail. So here I'm looking over this corner into that next corner and as I move down the trail I'm constantly looking for that high point and scanning ahead and looking through and finding the best point for me to look for that's as near to me in elevation as far down the trail as I can see. So we know that we need to look up. But the, the challenge is, is that when we're riding the trail, we often look down. And what we're going to look at is why do we look down into these sections? The first element we're looking at is the visual performance cue. And what they are are things that we see that affect how we ride. And what we want to do is learn to look through them. As we go through this session, we're going to look at different elements, different sections, and have a look at how we can get through them. But the visual performance cues here in this instance are the routes. The reason we call them visual performance cues is because what we're trying to do is use a new language to describe them. Because the brain works in the way it does, if I say to you not to look at the route, it's exactly the same as saying not to think of the pink kangaroo. As soon as I say not to do something, you do it. So if I say don't look at the routes, the first thing you'll do is look at them. Whereas if I say there's visual performance cues there and you need to look through them, you'll get used to looking through the trail rather than to those visual performance cues on it. And again, that all helps with you looking further down the trail and unlocking that, that distance vision as opposed to your peripheral vision. So it's okay to identify visual performance cues, but don't give them a name. That root, that stone, that drop. If you give them a name, they're more likely to know yours. And if they know yours, they're gonna shout it loud. The more, the more visual performance cues within a section, the louder that noise is gonna be. That white noise can distract you as a rider. So we wanna keep, turn that volume down, look through, and make the trail smooth out before us purely by raising our eyes and looking across the top and looking through those cues. So on a plain old section like this with a few corners, a few little visual performance cues here and there, it's pretty easy to keep our head up. But let's go further down the trail, we'll look at some different trail scenarios and how those different features on the trail and those different scenarios can make us respond differently and we'll look at the knock-on effects of uh, looking correctly, the positive effects on our body position and our, our general riding but also not just the physical side of riding but the mental side of riding and the psychology and we'll also flip that on its head and compare it to how we respond when we start to look down and how the negative effects can creep into our riding and disrupt our flow or even just put us off tackling a feature altogether. We looked at corners in quite a lot of detail last issue, carving our corners, and looking was obviously a very fundamental part of that. But just to recap here, as we found a nice example, 
as we look through this corner, it's very easy for our eyes to get drawn down into the flat spot on the exit of the corner there, or mid corner there. Partly because the soil itself has changed colour. That's where the water's sat and it's dragged some of the mineral across onto the trail. Uh, sorry, some of the organic onto the trail rather than the mineral. The rest of the trail is down to the mineral. So it draws our eye in and it's easy for us to, our eyes to stall there. As we ride into the corner, spotting that flat point and our eyes starting to focus in on it and hold, that hold our attention, spoils our rhythm and flow because we want to pick our head up and look through the section to what's coming next. Merely by lifting the head up, we can start to see through to the next corner much more early and we can start to plan ahead, make the necessary changes to our body position, speed control, etc. And that links, so the looking links into all of the other physical elements that we, we identify in our system. Footwork, looking, body position, entry section, exit, all neatly tied in together. And right at the heart of that is where we look and how we respond to visual performance cues. So flat spots, bounce your eyes up and look on through and you might see something further down the trail even scarier. So as Richard was saying, the key to the vision is really to be linking everything together with your eyes. If you get stuck down in the flat spot there, it's going to make exiting the corner that little bit harder. Once you're here on the exit, it's very easy to look down into the next corner. And what you want to be doing again is scanning ahead, looking for that high point on the trail, keeping your head up and looking through. Again on this corner, the foliage on the inside just frames up the trail a touch. So a little bit like a picture frame but we can look over it and look through for our exit. And what we want to be doing on the way into the trail, on the entry, is looking for the exit. And then as Richard said, setting our body position, footwork and looking becomes a whole lot more instinctive rather than a processed thought about thing that we do. Then we just rail this next corner, carrying on down the trail, looking ahead, looking for the next section or the next feature that we're coming up to ride.